Okay, now you have a full carboy and your red wine is ready to be bottled. Once we bottle the wine, you're going to want to store the bottles and allow them to further age. In this video, I'm going to cover in detail the basics of the bottling process, including additional equipment that you can employ to make the project go more smoothly. So let's begin. Each bottle should be rinsed, cleaned, sanitized, and totally dry. If you're going to bottle an entire carboy, you're going to need about 30 bottles. I constructed my own bottle tree to make it easier to store and organize my bottles. You can always purchase one online if you want to go that direction. While you're preparing your bottles, you should soak the new corks you are going to use in water for at least one hour, and I actually recommend two. Note, when using synthetic corks, they don't need to be soaked. I do wet them, and I find that it actually makes it easier to insert them into my bottles. After that, you're going to need to rinse them in a warm water bath. After the bottles and corks are prepared, you're ready to transfer the wine into the bottles. Siphoning and corking process. The process of transferring your wine from your carboy with the clarified wine to prepared bottles is referred to as siphoning. If it's done properly, it will reduce the risk of transferring unwanted sediment, organisms, and, and air to your bottled wine. Fill the wine bottles to about one centimeter below the cork in the neck of the bottles when they are in the upright position. If you plan to become a winemaking maven, I suggest purchasing a Ferrari wine filler. It makes transferring the wine from your carboy to wine bottles a much more efficient process. Additionally, it inserts the wine without adding additional oxygen into the filled bottle. It has an auto stop function to, el to eliminate spillage as well as adjustable fill levels. When I started making my own wine, I found that this made the transfer and filling process much more civilized as well as less sloppy. Inserting corks into the filled bottles is accomplished by using one of several methods. The price for a corker goes from 10 bucks to several hundred, depending on the model and the functions. Depending on your budget or the frequency of use, here are a few examples of those types. At the low end, there's the plastic plunger corker. It will suffice if you are going to make a batch of wine infrequently. The next level up would be the double-handled corker, which would be for the winemaker who wants a system that is easier than the inexpensive plunger type and more efficient. At the high end is the floor corker. That makes the process much easier on the hands and arms. I purchased one of these on eBay used, and it held up really well over the many years I've used it. Once your bottles are corked, it's time to label your bottles. There's several places on the web that you can order finished wine labels or blank printable sheets. I personally design my own labels using Adobe Illustrator and print them on a color laser printer. I've developed numerous designs depending on the situation. I glue them on using a Elmer's glue stick. You can use rubber cement, milk, or spray on adhesives as alternatives. One of the hardest skills to master is placing the labels onto your bottles with a uniform consistency. It might seem that this isn't important, but I'm a perfectionist. I believe that it's the little things that make or break someone's impression of your wine. I found a solution to this problem using a very simple label guide which I constructed from scrap lumber I had in my workshop. It has been very efficient and it gives me the results I need. The finishing touch is the addition of shrink capsules to protect the cork. You place the cap over the neck of the bottle and using a hair dryer or heat gun or dipping it into boiling water, they shrink to a professional finish for your bottle of wine in seconds. The boiling water is my preferred method and I like it because it's actually quick and foolproof. After filling, be sure to leave the bottle in an upright condition for at least three days to allow any surplus air to escape through the cork sides. After this, you should store the filled wine bottles on their sides, and this will seal the bottles from any air infiltration. Store the bottles in a cool location that is moisture-free and away from direct sunlight. I store my bottles actually in the original carton that holds 24 bottles. I fill them, label them, and let them stand for the three to four days. Then I tip the cartons over on its side, and I can actually stack several cartons to save space and let them age without fear of damage from sunlight. It's worked for me over the years. Once you stack your bottles, it's advisable to leave them stationary and not move them unless it's absolutely necessary. Aging the wine will improve its bouquet. Most experts agree that white wine needs at least six months while red wine should be allowed to age for a year or more to round out the tannins in the wine. 
refer to the wine specific recipe you use to obtain the ideal aging time frame.